So here we can see this is when it's all stitched together. Also, uh, here is the complete building of uh, GeoPlus. So we have stitched entire, entire, the entire point cloud together. Um, one other thing that's really interesting with the LiDAR point clouds is you can measure within within the the point cloud. So for example, if I wanted to measure uh, if I wanted to measure like the the opening of a door, I can do so here. This is in meters, so we're getting 1.8 meters. We can see the measurements here or also in our report measurement. Uh, you can see the distance between any points that you see, 13 meters here. Uh, something else, we can measure angles within our point cloud. For example, if I show this here, 104 degrees. So these are different, uh, different features that are possible. We have an edge enhancer here, which allows you to adequately detect your edges and also a magnifier to to magnify some of your your points if if necessary um, <clears throat> so if I was to show you a another nice feature that we have here is uh, we can have section views so for example if I would this is very useful for land surveyors if they want to use a, a point cloud to measure uh, along a road. So if I was to have a section done here, um, I, have a, I would pick points along, along the road. And I was to show this. Now it's going to take some time, okay. So it, what it does is it's going to actually cut a sliver through the LiDAR point cloud. Um, I see a question come up. How big is this, uh, how big is this file? Um, it, uh, if I think about the, uh, the, the file I showed you a bit earlier, wait a second, I'm just going to look at how big it was. Um, for the survey of our entire uh, building, it's about nine, nine gigabyte. So it's it's big, but it's not too big. But when we're talking about large scale projects and the higher higher the density, uh, it's going to be much more. We're talking about sometimes it could be huge amounts of data. If you're doing a large scale project at ten points per square meter, for example, this could easily go into the hundreds of hundreds of gigabytes. But for smaller smaller projects, uh, normally it's not too much, and it really depends on the density of your points. And normally, any scanner, you'll be able to set the point density that you want. So you won't get you won't get too many points if you don't if you don't need those many points. So here for uh, for the section view I was talking to you about. So here we set our uh, section settings. The thickness of our view would be 10 centimeters, for example. And one thing that's very useful for uh, for this, we can pick uh, some points along our road. So if I was to go and get
So I could pick points along my road here. And it could be set as a chain. So I could I could pick points along the road. Okay, some of the, sometimes in um, in surveying, they, the transport uh, ministries want they want chaining along the roads. So you, this can be used, for example, to detect the the edge of the border edges in the center of the road. And you can see the, and you can see these objects directly on the point cloud. Now this is not perfect because I'm going quickly here, but you can see the the edge of the of the of the border easily. So you would go along your section and you would you would be able to pick many points along your your section. And all these points that I'm, I'm picking right now can be exported to, for example, DXF. They can be exported to CSV uh, files, which then can then be imported into a uh, any CAD that you want. Uh, I'm talking about AutoCAD, MicroStation, um, PowerDraft, or BricsCAD. Any any type of CAD. Even uh, they could be brought into ArcGIS, for example. Uh, how it works here at uh, GeoPlus, we have we have many we have many programs. So we're working with databases here. These are uh, Microsoft Access dat databases. Um, so if I save, if I was to save my points here. It would add these points are added to my database, and if I was to show you all my my data uh, my points in my database, you could see that other work has been done here. So I I can I have all this information that I can bring into my uh, into my CAD. And here you see this uh, column here is called P codes. Uh, we're talking uh, about codes. Any this is all any codes that you want for for any system. For example, uh, here in Quebec, there there's the transport ministry has their own type of P codes. So these these codes are used to identify objects. For example, borders or the center of a street or uh, buildings or any type of object, trees. So we do associate a P code to them, and when you apply them to your drawing, they could be colored and have specific uh, sim symbology for these objects. So another uh, example of section view that I wanted to show you is going to show up here. We have another point cloud here that's very interesting. You can do a, a section view of a street, but you can also do a section view of a building, for example. Now, if I was to show you section view here, I would pick two points along my my cathedral and show. And you, here you're getting you're getting a section view of the cathedral. So you can go along and pick pick some points along if I change my step here I'm going to be so you could actually pick points along your uh, the contour of your your building. Right now I'm just using uh, I'm just using the tower here but you could actually pick points along the whole building and they would show up in your database and you could bring them then into your CAD. Uh, I'm going to just pick some points here to show you quickly. Now I'm, I would put in the right code. Uh, I'm sorry, this is all in French, but <laughs> it, it could be easily in English as well. So you would come here and pick some points along 
your building and you can see actually these points they're they're appearing onto the screen as I pick them and every time you click it's gonna associate directly to a point on the on the uh, point cloud so here we're, we're done for this one if I save and then I was to show you the points. See, I have I've already done a, a couple of points, so we can see. Uh, so we can have a three D view of our uh, of all the points I've been picking earlier. And this is my whole database, all the points in my database. Now I was talking to you earlier about uh, bringing data into uh, an AutoCAD uh, program or something. Here is my my drawing. Uh, if I show you, if I was to show you the same drawing, oh sorry, it's on the wrong screen. The same drawing is here. So all my all the points here that I, I was showing you earlier, I can be brought into a CAD. So here is uh, my AutoCAD screen, and every every point I have picked appears on the screen. Uh, which can be very useful for any type of surveying project where you have to show the, your points to a client. Um, for example, also one thing that's really good is when you pick your points, they're going to have a vertical um, information associated to them. So if I was to look here and I was to orbit, you can also see your points in 3D. So I can see my the few points I picked on the, along the tower uh, appear in 3D. Now I just picked a few points earlier. If I was to show you, uh, wait one second, I could show you uh, it, since there since my drawing is associated to a database, I can update automatically. See the points here have been added automatically. Um, if I was to draw my chains here, we would see them appear right here. Oh, so the, there appears the chain. So since, I've, since I added some points, they appear automatically onto my drawing. And uh, that's it. So when you pick points, you can add points easily onto your drawing structure. So that's pretty much it. Um, then uh, some other features that are really interesting in, um, in Vision LiDAR or any other LiDAR surveying. Uh, this is all virtual surveying we're doing right now. So if I want, uh, we have a, a few uh, automatic detection features that are really useful. We have a cylinder detection here, where you can automatically find cylinders. And here I was to pick. See the, the the software is going to find a, a cylindrical object and it's going to find a, the center point of this object and also finds the radius automatically. And this this point that was detected is automatically added into my database as I go along. So if I it could be used for uh, any type of lamp post or fire hydrant or even trees would work. If I find a, I'm trying to find a tree here to show you. So these are always irregular objects, but that have a cylindrical shape. They can be found easily. See, it appears here. So these points are added into my database. Um, another type of. Uh, Automatic detection is border detection, uh, sidewalk, the, ed the edge detection of sidewalks, for example. Here we have a sidewalk, and we have a uh, 
horizontal edge detection. So if I was to show you quickly, uh, I'm going to pick two points along, along my sidewalk. And if I was to start um, Oh, maybe this is not configured correctly. Anyway, normally, normally it, it would, uh, if I had the correct configuration, I'm not going to spend the time to figure the, the configuration, it would apply points all along the, the sidewalk. So it would detect my points, so I wouldn't have to actually manually pick the points. It would just automatically pick points along my border, which can be very useful uh, because obviously point clouds are really nice, but you don't want to be spending too much time uh, on point clouds. You, you want to be able to get the maximum information and be able to vectorize as much information as you can in the least amount of time possible. So, uh, another thing I, I was talking to you about before was the classification. Now, if I was to show you uh, this point cloud, is a point cloud of an aerial survey, uh, we see the points are in different colors. Now, these are not the natural colors. These are actually points that have been classified to give, uh, for example, we have three of the main classes that are used are uh, here in kind of orange is the ground point um, in the blue the classification has been done to detect the buildings and uh, in green is any type of vegetation so all the trees are have been classified to the ground uh, to to high vegetation or I think it's medium that way, if you want to have an analysis of your point cloud, and you, but you don't want trees, for example, you can remove the trees. Now, the, the classifications are not perfect, but still, it gives you a good idea. Here you can see mostly the without vegetation, and this is with vegetation. Similarly, you can remove the buildings. And you can do uh, any type of manipulation on only the ground, for example. The ground which would be useful, obviously, for uh, topographic mapping. Um, to continue, uh, something else that's really interesting uh, would be, uh, that I wanted to show you, would be uh, volume calculations. Now here we have a earth mound, which we have the tin calculated here. Tin is a triangular, triangulated irregular network. So what the program is going to do, it's going to, it's going to analyze the ground, and it's going to uh, find the lowest points in the point cloud, and it's going to, it's going to drape a, a tin along, along those points. So here we have uh, our ground classifications, which can be easily used to uh, detect your ground. Now you can set this by uh, you can set your all your tolerances here, so your network would be um, calculated by your preferences. So the if for example for a slope. If the slope is too high, it, it won't find the, any points that are higher than that slope. So for volume calculations, we go into, we have a civil, a, a civil module here. So I could, just to show you my mound here, this is a, for, this is by a, this is a terrestrial survey that was done. Uh, the four corners of the earth mound, for example, for any type of uh, construction job, you can have a, a LIDAR survey of an earth mound. And with a few scans, you can have a really good idea of the volume of your, of your mound. So here is my drawing. Um, if I was to show you 
the triangulation. So this is this surface has been calculated before. We have our we've set our uh, the contour of our surface, and uh, you can within the module you can create uh, you can calculate the triangulation of your with with the heights of your uh, surface. Also, something that can be done within the the program is uh, contour lines. So I can easily draw my contour lines. This can be used for topographic mapping, for example, or uh, for larger scale projects uh, for flood mapping. Uh, if I look at my volume, um, my volume tab here, you have uh, the the swell and the excavation. Uh, excavation value. So these are all in uh, uh, what is this cubic meters I think but if if the scan has been done in uh, imperial measurements it will be in uh, it will be in the American the American system. But you can get an adequate measurement so this is a I think it's a thousand two hundred uh, square uh, cubic uh, cubic meters that is. So you can have different analysis of your surface just by analyzing your point cloud within the program. Um, something else that's interesting with our program, for example, if you've had uh, a, um, a, a survey done, let's say here I have an example of two, sur two surveys merged together with two types. So here we have a mobile survey done, which is along the street, but also here we see that it's less dense. Uh, this is, has been done by aerial survey. So we can merge these two together. So it can be really interesting to, to merge different types of LiDAR together. We can get more information out of our, our data and present uh, a better analysis of the territory. Uh, just to finish up here, I'm going to just show you uh, another thing that can be interesting. Uh, there's a, a camera where you can, you can record your movements. This can be used for different presentations if you want to present a project and just have a quick, a quick view of a, a project area. So if I was to go back to my so here, now I'm not moving anymore, it's just a, a video. So this could be used, for example, to present a project to clients or... And normally people are very interested in seeing the project. It really brings the, the survey alive. So that's it. If I, uh, that, concludes my, uh, that concludes my presentation this morning. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so in conclusion, I would say that um, LiDAR is really great because it allows um, much more data collection in much less time. Uh, we're talking about here in static surveying, we talked in conventional surveying, a, a team who did both, who did a, a, a collection in conventional surveying and they had something like 3,000 points. But in the same time, they did a, a LiDAR scan and they had over 10,000 points. So it gives you much more information. And the possibilities for mapping and engineering are nearly endless. And uh, also virtual surveying, which we went through at length earlier, uh, is going to allow you to survey an area from, from the office. And instead of going back to the field, for forgotten measurements. So that's pretty much it. So uh, if you guys have any questions, I hope I answered the first question uh, to Tom well. <laughs>